So Seabomb just released his top 10 favorite exercises. And so many people have made reaction videos to this, including the CEO of the Fitness Matrix, Gregory Douchehead. Everyone who is reacting to Seabomb's top 10 exercises are looking at it through a bodybuilding lens, AKA an unathletic, unesthetic, and of course, an unhealthy lens. Because I'm here to make fitness great again, I'll be looking at Calvin Bumstead's top 10 exercises through an athletic bodybuilding view. And let you know which exercises you should incorporate into your athletic bodybuilding routine and which exercises you should switch. Before we get started, Calvin Bumstead just wants you to know Leon Edwards is more aesthetic than you. If you only had 10 exercises for the rest of time, yeah. that's all you have in your library to stay as muscular as possible, give me the list. So the, the goal is to be as muscular as possible. Correct. Honestly, this topic is why bodybuilding is so unhealthy today. The question, what are your top exercises to be as muscular as possible is a terrible question. First of all, building way too much muscle and looking like a bodybuilder is not aesthetic, whether you're a guy or you're one of my huge female audience members. And second, it's not functional at all. So many of the exercises these bodybuilders do don't incorporate the core, take stability out, use these stupid knee sleeves and belts, and this doesn't incorporate to functional strength that you can use in outside activities or sports if you're an athlete. And this idea of being as muscular as possible is a big reason why so many people take PEDs, even though you can achieve so much naturally and achieve a better quality of life, which is what my brother and I preach in our Make Fitness Great Again movement. Squats. Why? Just overall leg growth. They help glutes, quads, like a large portion of the leg that Barbell really back help. squat. Barbell back squat. Super okay. simple. Right. Let's go, Calvin. I totally agree with this choice. The barbell back squat is probably the best exercise you can do because the squat is not just a leg movement, but it's a total body movement. The squat primarily targets the quads and the glutes, but if you're one of my huge female audience members, you can do a low bar squat because with a low bar squat, it forces you to lean further forward and that engages your glutes and hamstrings more. But people forget about the huge core demand the squat takes. Your core is constantly engaged to stop your body from falling forward, especially when you're holding a lot of weight on your back and it's constantly active to keep your spine in a neutral position so you perform this exercise safely. But if you're performing a barbell squat, don't use a stupid belt and knee sleeves. If it's my whole life, I might actually do some Smith machine squats because it'll help my knees and a little bit, be a little bit easier. Okay. Plus okay. stability and people hate me for that, but I love squatting in the Smith machine. All right. I get a lot of shit for that. Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. He just turned a great top 10 exercise into a terrible one. Saying this is like buying a Lambo and then putting a whole bunch of bumper stickers all over it. Because at the end of the day, a Smith machine squat is just a diet version of a barbell squat. It's like MJ to Kobe. It's just a worse version of it. Calvin is right in that a Smith machine squat, you'll be more stable. But too many stupid bodybuilders act like being less stable is worse. When in reality, being less stable is actually great. It forces you to use your core and your muscles to stabilize the weight. What's the point of having muscle? if it can't do anything. Because at that point, you're just a peacock. You have all these feathers and they don't do anything. Bodybuilders don't like this, but every single daily activity you do, you need to use your core. And unless you're an 85 year old man, you're not wearing a belt when you're doing these daily activities. So you should be doing the same thing at the gym. The squat is way better than the Smith machine squat. Calvin also mentions that this will be better for his knees in the long run. And this couldn't be further from the truth. The Smith machine squat not only takes away a big stability and core demand, but also takes away the balance demand of a normal squat. All these attributes apply to sports and real world activities. Having more stability, having a weaker core, and having worse balance will only make you more injury prone not less injury prone. So clearly Calvin doesn't know what he's talking about here. Bodybuilders need to stop running from the squat. It has the perfect combination of instability and specificity because studies have shown that ground-based exercises actually have the perfect combination of athletic performance and hypertrophy gains. So being too unstable can actually hurt your hypertrophy gains too much, but being too stable doesn't allow you to create functional muscle, which is why my brother and I preach athletic bodybuilding so much because it's the perfect balance. But I'll give Calvin the benefit of the doubt. Let's see his Smith machine squat. Oh my God, Calvin, you're killing me. As if the Smith machine squat wasn't stable enough, he's wearing a belt and knee sleeves, which are completely unnecessary for this movement and lots of other movements as well. I've had so many butthurt bodybuilders go in my shorts about knee sleeves and talk about, oh, knee sleeves, they prevent injury. If you wanna get injured, then don't wear knee sleeves. There is a lack of evidence that knee sleeves prevent injury. And the lifting belt does not allow your abs to train optimally. And it's also not task specific, because like I mentioned before, you're never using a belt outside 
outside of the gym. And both the knee sleeves and the lifting belt make you so reliant on external equipment for stability that you're likely more injury prone when you're not wearing it. So when you're playing sports or you're doing activities outside the gym. The only time you should be wearing a lifting belt and knee sleeves are for near maximal lifts. But I personally don't recommend using them much at all because I typically feel like they allow you to have some false confidence to do weights you cannot handle. I feel like every time you see a squat fail online, people are wearing way too much equipment and doing weight they can't handle. But yeah, Calvin, at the end of the day, a normal barbell squat is way better than a Smith machine squat. There's a reason why Leon Edwards has aesthetic legs and athletic legs. Deadlifts? Okay. Just to get something that'll target the my hamstrings. And so I don't have to take out another 10 of two, something too hamstring focused and glute and back focused. I agree with Calvin again here, but hopefully he doesn't mess it up again. The deadlift is an amazing exercise because it targets your whole entire posterior chain. And just like the squat, it targets lots of large muscle groups. And studies have shown that this actually increases testosterone more than other exercises. It's also a super functional exercise because it teaches you how to pick things up from the ground with proper form so you don't throw out your back. I've had a lot of questions if you should deadlift on leg day or back day. And in my opinion, you should always deadlift on back day. Some people might disagree with that, but if you deadlift and squat on the same day, you're going to be exhausted. So doing them on separate days and adjusting them accordingly will be the best for your overall recovery. Now let's take a look at Calvin deadlifting. I actually don't have a problem with him using a belt here because he's lifting heavy weights. For a deadlift, you should only use a belt if you're going over 85% of your one rep max. But an easier way to look at it is, I like to say, if you're going anywhere less than five reps, then wearing a belt is okay. Um, Pull-ups, so I can hit my back and biceps in one. Overhand, underhand? Neutral. Oh, neutral grip. Neutral probably, yeah. Okay. It's a little bit more Latin biceps. Yep. Yep. Make sure my arms are going. Again, Calvin turned a great exercise into a stupid one. Pull-ups are a great exercise because they hit your lats and your biceps. And they also have a great core demand on like a lat pull-down. But the choice of a neutral grip is terrible. Doing a neutral grip is like you can't decide whether you want to hit lats or biceps today. And we all know the man that chases two rabbits catches neither. So before doing any sort of pull-up, decide if you want to hit your lats more or your biceps more. If you want to hit your lats in a pronated or an overhand grip, aka a normal pull-up, will be better for hitting your lats, which is super important important for aesthetics because it'll help give you that nice V taper. But if you want to hit your biceps and just do a normal chin up and focus on curling yourself up to the bar rather than pulling yourself up to the bar. Um, incline dumbbell press. Uh huh. I find inclines a little bit better on your shoulders. So if you're yeah. doing it's the only exercise you can do, you won't fuck up your shoulders as much. And dumbbell, it'll just keep you a little bit more symmetrical. Yeah, I love that. I've always loved that exercise, w which is weird because uh, incline barbell press is one of the most uncomfortable for my shoulders. Really? Yeah. So you can do dumbbell? Yeah. Most people feel better with dumbbell because you can go into a position Shift around a little bit. For it. Incline dumbbell bench press is not a bad choice from Calvin. I agree with this choice because the upper chest doesn't respond as well as the lower chest. And also there's two heads of the chest, not three. I don't know why these stupid bodybuilders made up one extra head, but there's two heads. And in terms of using a dumbbell or a barbell, I prefer dumbbell. If you prefer a barbell, then go ahead and do barbell. But for all exercises, it's important to use a variety. Each has their own pros and cons. Dumbbell better for stability, better for range of motion, but barbell is way better for strength and way easier to progressively overload. Dumbbell shoulder press. Dumbbell shoulder press. I definitely agree with Calvin on this one. Seated? Seated. Yep. Dumbbell shoulder press. Yeah, I think that'll help your triceps and shoulders a lot. Calvin found another way to mess up a great exercise. It's crazy how the guy interviewing him encourages this terrible behavior. A shoulder press is not only a great shoulder exercise, but a great core exercise. And sitting down takes away that benefit. And of course, it's super lazy. And I guess Calvin is falling under this lazy bodybuilder stereotype. Imagine telling someone, oh, I did a great workout and I was sitting down the whole time. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It sounds stupid. In sports and active daily activities, you're never sitting down and doing them. You're not at the gym to sit around and lay down. You're at the gym to train. Shoulders are super important for aesthetics, so make sure you're doing your dumbbell shoulder press and make sure you're doing it standing. Don't be lazy. But I'm not going to judge my friend Calvin. We'll take a look at his shoulder press. Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. People need to stop shoulder pressing at this 90-90 field goal position. First of all, it's not functional at all. If you pressed or reached like that in real life, you'd look so stupid. And second, this position of 90 degrees of shoulder abduction and 90 degrees of shoulder external rotation is super susceptible to shoulder dislocation. I've shown numerous clips on my shorts of people dislocating their shoulder in this stupid position. But even if you ignore the health of your shoulders, this position is not as strong as pressing in the scapular plane, aka about 
about 45 degrees out in front of your body. This position is way more functional and because your shoulders can move a lot more freely, you're actually more powerful in this position. So to sum up, Calvin's shoulder press is not only lazy because he's sitting down, but it's susceptible to shoulder dislocation and it's not functional at all. Maybe a, a close grip flat bench. Different part of the chest and triceps. Uh -huh. getting okay. hit there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Close grip bench press. I'm actually a big fan of this exercise. I'm a big fan of close grip bench and dips for the triceps because they're both compound movements that allow you to load up the tricep unlike other movements. I mean, I can do skull crushers with about 70 pounds total, but I can close grip bench press about 185, 200. So that just shows you how much you can load up your tricep with these compound movements. Dumbbell curl. Just something specific. Brilliant. I'm just, so glad that was in there. How do you want to live without doing fucking dumbbell <laughs> yeah, curls? It doesn't even for the help your physique. Your life, I just you know? need it for my mindset. Exactly. Yeah. Dumbbell bicep curl. You can't really go wrong with this exercise. I choose chin ups for bicep growth, but I'm not going to flame Calvin on that one. Supinated. You, again, this is the only one that you're going to get. Are you seated? Can't Are you standing? <laughs> uh, standing. Supinated. And I like how he said standing. I guess he knows me, knew I was going to flame him if he was sitting down and doing bicep curls, but I'm happy he's doing them standing up. And it's going to be one arm basics. at a time. It can't yeah. be both arms together. It's going to be one arm one at a time. time yeah. Yeah. Again, Calvin ruins a great exercise. Why would you do bicep curls alternating? If you do alternating bicep curls, then you literally have one arm just chilling while the other one is going. And you're not keeping constant tension on the biceps. And because I love core demands and exercises, doing a one arm dumbbell curl has less core activation than doing two. For example, if I was curling 30 pounds, if I curled one arm up, it'd only be 30 pounds I have to resist from my body falling backwards. But if I'm doing two, it's 60 pounds I have to use my core to stay upright and stop myself from falling backwards. I'm getting tired of Calvin picking great exercises and then ruining them. Until Vero. Okay. It'll, that'll help like stability, the like core as well. Uh-huh and then like lower back and obviously upper back. Bent over row, I agree with this choice. I find it funny how he added core and stability. I guess he just added that in there so I wouldn't go after him. But let's take a look at Calvin doing bent over rows. Dude, why are you wearing a belt for bent over rows? Again, unless you're going over 85% of your one rep max on an exercise that directly loads the spine, you should not be wearing a belt. Bodybuilders find any reason to use a belt these days. Also, if you guys are looking for great supplements, be sure to check out Mansports. They have great products to help you reach your goals, with my favorites being the whey protein and the creatine. And use code MARTIN at checkout for a discount. Probably like a hanging leg raise, just to make sure your core is getting hit and you're not mm -hmm. like... Fucking up your back. Hanging leg raise, not a bad exercise, but with Calvin taking the core out of so many movements, it would have been better if he did a core exercise that focused more on stability. Because the main function of the core is to stabilize the body for upper extremity and lower extremity movement. Think about this, when was the last time in real life you did some sort of hanging leg raise or did any curls? Yeah, never. And now think about the last time you used your core to stabilize while you're lifting up objects. Yeah, that was probably like five minutes ago because even simple things like carrying the groceries or walking requires you to use your core to stabilize the body for upper extremity, aka arms, and lower extremity leg movements. I like how he says fucking up my back because bodybuilders have this kind of idea that they have to be body experts and they have to know a lot about rehab and muscle imbalances. He's technically not wrong, but I just find it funny when bodybuilders trying to act like they're PTs. I would probably do lateral raises just to get some meaty delts over. Lateral raises, a good choice from Calvin. Lateral raises are so important for aesthetics because they give you wider shoulders and helps build that V taper. But don't be a lazy bodybuilder. Do them standing up. And also don't do this inter Internal rotation garbage that's terrible for your shoulders just do a neutral grip just keep it simple you know? what about your future crossfit career so we've spoken about oh what boy. you've done what you've done so far <laughs> but before we started you've said that you want to take up crossfit once you finish yeah i mean i just i used to be very athletic when i was young it's really what got me into bodybuilding i just loved sports i played like six of them when i was younger and i would like to get back to that like form of feeling like i can run i'm strong i can do a lot of body weight exercises i could train anywhere in the world and just kind of like challenging my body in a new way because i'm obviously not going to be hitting any prs in the gym or being heavier than i've ever been than i am in my peak bodybuilding career so just finding a new goal to focus on I might dabble in that but it's more of like an athletic training see calvin is a secret fan of athletic bodybuilding i mean he literally just explained about all the benefits of athletic bodybuilding compared to bodybuilding pretty crazy how many things he can't do with how much he weighs just like calvin said athletic bodybuilding is far superior you're more athletic you're far healthier which is a big deal and of course it looks damn good too it's so funny to think that the particular sport that you chose to go after actually has a load of restrictions on it. Like it's very, very consistent, very repetitive, mm -hmm. 
by its nature, not a team sport. You know, there's a bunch of different things that yeah. it constrains you from doing. I don't know why this guy is pumping him up by feeding him a lie. Bodybuilding is not a sport. In no way does bodybuilding require performance at all. It's more of a beauty pageant than it is a sport. Imagine me calling modeling a sport because they have to work out and eat healthy. I'd even argue esports is more of a sport than bodybuilding because they actually have to compete and perform. What do you weigh now? How, how heavy are you? I'm about 262 right now, 260. Right. You said that you could dunk a year ago, though. I could, At yeah. 260. I got a video of it, so I'm not lying. No yeah. way. Do you put it online? It is online, yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, but yeah, my point being that a game of pickup, you know, a 30-minute game of pickup basketball would probably be not very good for your knees. No, I, I did it last year. I was telling you that, yeah. yeah. I went and played with a bunch of the guys here. We played... Probably played for almost an hour. It was pretty long and I could not walk for a week. Like This is just proof that bodybuilding is not healthy. And this doesn't even consider the cardiovascular health of Sebum who blasts steroids. I mean, if your knee is torn up after playing basketball one time, you know your body is not healthy. If you calculate Sebum's BMI, he has the BMI of an obese person and almost morbidly obese. While it's obviously better to be muscular than fat, this doesn't take away from the fact that his knees are holding a lot of weight. And this could lead to further problems down the line like knee osteoarthritis. And this could also be due to his terrible training. Like I mentioned before, using a Smith machine, using knee sleeves, just makes your balance, coordination, stability, and core strength worse. That only makes him more injury prone. And like I mentioned before, if he had an athletic, aesthetic build, he wouldn't have any of these problems. And he'd have 10 out of 10 ribs. Sitting in the so bizarre, right? Because you think athlete, professional athlete. What do you do for a, a living? I, I like fitness things yeah it's but like, people ah. often don't call bodybuilding athletes so, yeah you know? but I, like it's a, not that fitness either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and you also said that after your last crossfit workout you'd had a cough for like 10 days after. yeah even sebum knows he's not an athlete it's crazy how this guy keeps feeding him this fact that he competes in a sport and he's an athlete and again using this logic kendall jenner is an athlete and competes in a sport at the end of the day cowan knows a lot about building muscle but not creating a healthy lifestyle also if you're looking for great athletic bodybuilding workouts that will help you get your most aesthetic physique, then check out the ultimate athletic bodybuilding subscription that I just released. Not only will you get amazing athletic bodybuilding workouts every month that will help you not only look better, but perform better, but you'll have access to a private athletic bodybuilding community with like-minded athletic bodybuilders, my brother Mario and myself. And weekly Q&A calls with my brother Mario and myself to answer all of your questions. I'll put a link in the description below and if you use code Calvin, you'll get 50% off your first month. But at the end of the day, if I had to sum up my opinion on C Bum's top 10 exercises, I would just say this is why Leon Edwards has the most aesthetic physique.